Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Kind of had mixed feelings here. I put some remarks together, then hearing the discussion back and forth. So maybe I don't need to say anything. But then I remembered the last five or six years of my history, so I figured it's worth getting in front of you all and just saying a few things. Anyhow, Dave Carver, I live on Bellow Avenue, I've been here since 92. In 97, I became a volunteer softball coach, and I've had the chance to spend the last 12 springs on the <coughs> fields of Madison with a bunch of young ladies, and I'm looking forward to my 13th this coming spring. But this is the spring which the fields are going to give us more challenges than ever before. The realities are this is most likely the last spring I can count on the Green Village fields. You know, that's good news that we can sell it, we can get the money and put it into the future, but the scary part is my program lives on there a lot right now. Without it, we'll struggle. We also use the Bailey Eller field for the last couple of years, but a huge benefit to our program, not so much this year. So we're really in a tough place with fields, which is a reminder why it's so important to move forward with this program. Now, with the help of the rec department, with the race team, we have solutions. We're going to get through this spring, but a year from now, don't know what's going to look like. I was thought, you know, for years, my civic involvement was really limited to being a coach, working with the kids and trying to have a little bit of fun and taking on a leadership role in the program. And that was good enough for me, quite honestly. I had other things to do. But I also started to realize that to ensure the continuing success of what we're trying to accomplish with kids, I had to do more. So I looked back over all my notes. In June 2005, the Green Village, Green Village Citizens Committee gave a report to the Board of Ed about the importance of the Green Village fields. And I had a chance to talk that night about why those fields in that complex were so important for the kids. Two years later, in May 2007, I stood in front of you all and talk about the recommendation at that time, which was to move the Green Village complex building and fields to the town. Turn it into an art center, turn it into fields. Then I think earlier this year, I talked about, let's buy the Bailey Ellard fields. And uh, I figure with a track record like this, I'm 0 for 3. Maybe I just give up. But it reminded me why I really want to get in front of you all again tonight. Because every time it looks like we're making progress, we don't. And when I think about it, for 12 years I've been doing this, so 12 classes I graduated from high school during this time. Three classes, that's three classes I kid you, going from freshman to senior, freshman to senior, freshman to senior. We really haven't done anything to kind of maintain the status quo and do our best. Got a lot of hard work and volunteers. There's piles of people here tonight, and I watched them all year long, running around the fields with a pile of kids trying to make it positive. We've got lots of effort over these years, but we don't have a whole lot of results. We're just maintaining the status quo. So I really want to say I'm hearing good things. I hear everybody saying, let's move. So I just want to kind of put a postscript on it. We're in a time and a place where it's really important we take advantage of the opportunity now. Last Saturday, I was invited by Marty to join the team of people over at the YMCA and take a look at their ideas for the fields. And I think it just gives us a great starting place. To the point is, it doesn't take up 49 acres. I think it's about 10 of the entire 49, plus with the high, this high school property. But it allows us to get started on the fields while leaving everything else wide open for whatever is possible. And there's so many things. I got two dogs. It'd be nice to have another place to let my dogs <laughs> run around. I'm really excited about that. There's still a lot of opportunity to land. It requires ongoing oversight. Like you said, with a group of people, Chris and his team, say what else is possible. But we've got to get moving on the fields. Now, I know a lot of people are going to look at the plans and see fields, ongoing expenses. I know many of my neighbors have different income levels. They have different interests. They have different time horizons. But I really believe, as I always have, that youth sports kind of crosses all that. And the story I always think about is the one dad who told me is the thing that really hit him hard about working with his daughter in youth sports is after she had gone off to college, he realized how hard it was to stay close to your kids sometimes. But being a coach, being on those fields, it really kept us connected with his daughter as she moved from a nine-year-old to a 15-year-old and off to college. And they'll always have that as part of who they are. And I think that's what's so important about the opportunity by the MRC to give the parents here, the families here, and the families for many years to come the same opportunity to stay connected to their kids and have a positive difference on it. So I think the work that Marty and his team have done is a really good one. It provides an opportunity for all the sports programs instead of the soccer guys and the softball guys and the, and the lacrosse guys and the football guys out fighting with each other. It says we're all in this together. We met to the point also made is we've committed to go back to our programs and say you guys guys have put some cash into this game also through an ongoing field use because you can't just drop it in there and hope for the best. It requires service and support. It also requires different expectations of our, rec of our rec department here in town, the people in town. We can get away with the leadership we had today with what we have today. If we drop this asset in the middle of our community, we got to reset the expectations for the people who work for us, the people who work for Ray, say you really have to manage this differently than what you've managed in the past. And I also think about 2010. It's going to be a tough year. My company's merged. A lot of people have merged. We had people at our sign-up show that said, you know, I can barely make the mortgage. Can my daughter play softball? You betcha. 
There's always sponsorships and always scholarship for kids and families in that area, because that's what it's all about. But I really want to challenge all of you, is make this real now. Find the way to get through the permitting and all the challenges. It's not easy. I realize it's not easy at all. But a lot of the hard work's been done to build this little tiny bit of what can become an incredible asset in the years ahead for Madison. And like I started with, I almost said nothing. But I remembered I tried to say something from Green Village, and it failed. I failed the way I look at it. Three times we started to make progress, and we got nowhere. So it's really interesting. We may make progress tonight, but there are no promises here. There are no guarantees unless we can look to you all for the leadership that the community needs, turn the ideas of these guys and turn the ideas of the kids in town, because I think it'd be really cool about a year from now, well, next, next fall, to walk in those fields for the first time and watch a pile of kids playing. So that's all. Thanks for the opportunity to talk. Thank you, Mr. Carter.